Okay, I am ready to talk about my two makes. So, one of the patterns that I made, which is Butterick 5652, the purplish wine looking colored dress, is an older pattern. It is from the year of 2011. I purchased the fabric, which is a knit crepe from Fashion Fabrics Club online. Now this pattern is rated as very easy. There are only two pattern pieces. The only thing that gave me a little trouble was the V neck, the front, because they want you to use purchase bias tape, or I guess you can make your own. I purchased my bias tape, and then you had to apply the bias tape to the front V opening and then lap it over and all of that. And I actually found it to be a little challenging, so I was able to look up a video on YouTube. <laughs> And I will link that video just in case it can be helpful to someone else. It was helpful for me, so I will go ahead and link that to help you out if you need to know how to do that. Um, now, this is a dress that is just a pullover dress. It's pretty wide and it's very, very comfortable. The only thing that I did differently, I pulled out a belt pattern from another pattern and I just followed along. I had enough fabric left and I was able to make a belt to kind of go around my waist. So I like this dress. So my next dress, which is the black and white gingham dress, is a 2020, year 2020 pattern from McCall's. It is McCall's 8053. It is the Anne dress. And this fabric was a poly cotton fabric that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. Now this pattern, as far as the front piece, was very different because if you wanted your front piece to have darts, they had a separate pattern piece for the front that included darts, and then they had a separate pattern piece for the front that you would cut out if you did not want darts. So I thought that was very interesting. I chose to put darts in my front piece, so there are darts on the side of the front of the dress of the one that I chose to make. For the neckband and the armhole opening, the pattern provides pieces for you to cut out to make binding. And then you apply the binding around the, the neck and the armhole. I decided not to put binding on the neckline and instead I used piping. It was my first time using piping, but I did use the binding for the armhole opening. And the piping was really easy to apply. I found a video that showed how to apply it to the neckline and I will link that just in case you're interested. Now the pattern is rated as easy. Now the only change that I made other than putting the piping around the neckline is that I also decided for this dress that I will go ahead and make a belt. I did not use a belt pattern for this one. I just cut a long rectangle piece and just made the belt. It was really simple. You just sew down the one seam, fold it in half, and you know, close it up. So yeah, I just decided to make a belt. I felt like the dress would look a little bit better with a belt. So now what I will do is just show you video clips of me wearing the dresses, and I will show you how they look with the belts, and also how they look without. Yes, yeah, so those are my dresses. All right, so 
before I go, I want to leave you with a love share. So my love share today is called Google Lens. Now Google Lens is something that you can access through Google, actually the Google app. So I have the Google app on my phone and I will go ahead and show you how the Google Lens works and it is really, really, really cool. Okay, so I have my phone. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is download the Google app, which is right here. That's what it looks like. So you download the Google app, then you open that. After you download the Google app, you will see this little square thing that has the different little colors on it. So you wanna tap on that to access the Google Lens. Now, if it's your first time accessing Google Lens, or it will question whether you want to let Google access your camera. So you wanna say yes if you plan to use this. Okay, so now as you can see, there are different little icons or I don't know what you call them, but little things down here at the bottom. And these things will do different things when you press on them. So this first one, when you have something in front of it, like some type of text that's in a foreign language, this will go ahead and translate that text for you. Then this one, if you have text, um, you can actually put the camera over the text and then you can copy text with your finger. You could just highlight and copy text and then you can move it and do things with it. This search one is really, really cool because you can put it on an object. Okay, so here's some flowers. So I'm going to position the camera onto the flowers. I'm gonna press this little circle and then it will pull up images showing what the flower is. Garden roses, that's the first option. So yeah, it's really cool because you can identify even landmarks. Okay, it doesn't always get it right, but it's a start. And then this one here is a shopping cart. So if you were out shopping somewhere and you had a barcode, put the camera over the barcode and it will tell you what the item is. And then this last one is dining. So if you are out somewhere and you have a menu at a restaurant, you can scroll this over the menu and it will give you information about the items on the menu. So I think that this is really, really cool and I plan to use it. So that is the Google Lens app and I think it is so cool. I haven't used it very much because I just recently learned about it, but I plan to put some use to that app because I think it is just amazing. So yeah, and speaking of apps, do you all have any favorite apps? I'm just curious, I would love to know. So if you do, please, please, please let me know in the comments. I would love to learn about new apps. So thank you for sharing if you decide to do so. That is all, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to know you can click on the little thumb that's sticking up below.